This conference will now be recorded. For March 6, 2023, this time I'd like to ask the uh, Reverend Adam Sale from Center Road Baptist Church for provider invitation. And then after that, if county, county manager, Greg Martin, will be my Thank you for this privilege. Dear God, we just thank you for the opportunity just as we stand here before you to remember to celebrate life each and every day. Every moment of every day is a gift. It's a privilege to stand and receive your mercy and grace. Yes. To know that we can seek forgiveness from you for all things. Help us to remember as decisions are made here in the days, weeks, months to come, that we live under your authority and your authority alone. Yes. We are granted the privilege of life, and to cherish it, to honor it, to respect it. And all these things, God, we praise you the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, the ability to receive forgiveness to return home where we all began to you. In your son, Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ten items. Motion to approve. Second. Motion to approve by Mr. Peterson. Second by Mr. Cameron. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Next, we have um, Trillium Health Resources, the Southern Region of the Region. Cecilia Peters. Thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Is it okay if I present from here? I have some notes because there's Absolutely. Yes, a ma'am. lot of information to share. Thank you. So, good evening, Chairman Hester and Commissioners. Um, my name is Cecilia Pierce. I'm the Southern Regional Director for Trillium Health Resources. Um, each year we come before um, our county commissioners to provide an annual update. Um, and of course, this year being the first full year uh, that Bladen County is um, with Trillium in our catchment area, um, we have a lot to share and we appreciate you taking the time to hear an update from us. Um, so just to uh, kind of share some basic information about Trillium um, for folks in the audience and maybe people who are less familiar, um, our mission is transforming lives and building community well-being through partnership and, and proven solutions. Um, so just in this update, I'll kind of share, you know, who Trillium is as an organization, um, help to kind of share some of the changes related to Medicaid transformation and how it will impact people um, receiving Medicaid in Bladen County, um, and then also uh, share some organizational changes that Trillium has had to make in order to be prepared to offer whole person care under tailored plan services, um, and then share uh, some local data and initiatives um, that we have brought to Bladen County over the last year. Um, so just some, some numbers for you um, and who we are a little bit more. So we're the local management entity and managed care organization. Um, we cover 28 counties in eastern North Carolina. Um, Halifax and Bladen are two newest counties. We've actually had four counties join over the last couple of years, um, Halifax and Bladen being the, the two newest. Um, and what we do really is to connect people to care who have Medicaid and have the most significant behavioral health, intellectual and developmental disabilities and substance use disorders. And then we also serve people who are uninsured who have behavioral health and IDD needs as well through state funds. Um, and what's unique to Trillium as a, as a public health plan um, is that as a local management entity, we are really part of regional government. Um, our uh, government, um, has a regional model, so um, we're really uh, appreciative of Commissioner Ellis being on our board um, and also Dr. Molly Wen. And we do have um, a consumer and family advisory committee. Um, we have a regional advisory board and the CFAC for each region that provides local input. And it's a way for us to share um, initiatives and things that are happening at the local and state level through Trillium 
um, that will be important to Bladen County and its citizens. Um, so this is a little bit more about our regional approach. You can see the map with our three regions. Um, Bladen County is part of our southern region. And this regional approach really allows us to focus more on a smaller number of counties, um, look in depth at um, those county needs, and try to meet the needs of the, the individual counties and their citizens. One of the things that I did want to mention um, today is that we do have some open positions on our consumer and family advisory committee. Um, so like I mentioned, Tommy Thompson is here today um, and he is representing as a family member um, of someone with substance use concern. Um, we, do, we still do have open positions for someone representing um, the mental health population, traumatic brain injury population, um, and the IDD population. So if you all um, know of anyone who would like to join um, that committee or if there's anyone in the audience here um, that would like to join, um, please feel free to reach out to me. We would be happy to have more representation. Um, so I did want to share some information about Medicaid transformation because it does have a large impact on um, who the citizens are getting their care from. Um, so the state has been planning for Medicaid transformation for many years now. Um, prior to the start of Medicaid transformation, people who were receiving Medicaid were receiving their care through two separate channels of physical health plans and behavioral health and IDD plans. Um, Medicaid transformation uh, seeks to combine those so that individuals receiving Medicaid will now have one managed care organization meeting all of those needs. Um, and the goal really is to offer that whole person care where we're looking at both the physical and health, um, mental health or substance use or IDD needs combined and, and also how they obviously interact with each other. Standard plans began serving people in the mild to moderate range of behavioral health needs in July of 2021. Uh, they went live um, at that time. And when they did, uh, approximately 70% of those who were receiving Medicaid ended up being served by standard plans. Um, so the LME NCOs continued to serve individuals with the most significant behavioral health and IDD needs um, as uh, soon to become tailored plans. So tailored plans are that whole person care plan for individuals with those most significant needs who often need complex care. Um, all six LME MCOs were approved to become tailored plans. Um, the state has recently moved to the launch of tailored plans back to October 1st of 2023. Um, we've experienced a couple delays down the line, some of which were related to the delays of standard plans being implemented, and some are related to making sure that uh, the network of primary care health providers and specialty health providers is adequate across the state um, so that people can receive their care where they would like to on day one. Um, we are proud to say as Trillium that we felt ready to launch on April 1st, which was um, our last intended launch date. Um, we were, uh, in terms of primary care coverage, we were at 100% um, of network adequacy for primary care. Um, and at 95% for hospital coverage, um, which met the uh, and exceeded the state requirements. So we were ready to go, um, but the state has consistently said that all, in, all LME MCOs must be ready to launch as a tailored plan um, in order for uh, tailored plans to go live. And so that was what caused the delay. Throughout the state, we want to have that consistent coverage. So one aspect of tailored uh, plan care that did go live on December 1st as a soft launch was tailored care management. Um, and along with some other significant changes, this was one of them. Um, so tailored care management is a service that's available to tailored plan Medicaid recipients. Um, and that's really designed to encourage preventative care, utilization of services according to a member's care plan that, um, that the care management provider oversees on behalf of the member. 
um, and then utilization of services uh, and connection to resources that relate to non-medical health needs. So prior to care management, care coordination was offered during times of transition, typically after a crisis or a hospitalization. And tailored care management is more of a year-round consistent service to help people maintain stability, to kind of take ownership um, and self-manage their care as much as possible, and to help avoid utilization of crisis and emergency services um, that are more costly and more disruptive to members um, than regular community-based care. Also, as part of Taylor's plan, um, Trillium is covering physical health benefits. Um, so we're doing this with a standard plan partner, and that partner is Carolina Complete Health. Um, so working, we're working with Carolina Complete um, to onboard over a thousand physical health providers into our network, which is not a small lift. Um, it's a significant organizational change for us in our network. Um, and we're also managing pharmacy benefits and onboarding pharmacies into our network as well. Uh, one additional change related to Medicaid transformation is we are going to offer um, non-emergency Medicaid transportation for tailored plan members. So um, most folks are calling to DSS at the moment. Um, folks who are continuing with Medicaid Direct will still do that. Tailored plan members will now contact us for um, those transportation needs for their um, Medicaid services. So obviously, um, becoming a tailored plan has required a lot of change on our part. Um, and so there are many more changes than I could absolutely share with you this evening. So I just wanted to highlight a few. Um, one of the changes is our system of care team. Um, they support the system of care model ensuring child-serving systems are working together, um, and that team has moved to our care management department, and that's really to help support members more directly in making sure that we're adhering to that model and that those systems are talking to each other so that kids are getting access to the resources and services that they need. Also, um, to make sure that we are fully engaged in our communities, even with the move of system of care staff to another team, we hired community liaison coordinators. Um, so Dina Hamilton, I'll just point out, she's in the back. Um, she's our community liaison coordinator for Bladen County, um, and she has been involved in um, community-based meetings like Safe Kids Initiative, Healthy Bladen, um, multidisciplinary team meetings, and care reviews for children involved in the juvenile justice system. Um, so we try to be involved in as many um, things that would you know, relate to our members and they're getting access to care as possible. Another part of our organizational change has, to, um, has been to bring on staff with physical health expertise um, so that we can truly support that population health approach and encourage timely and appropriate health screening, preventative care, as well as accessing specialty care. We've established a health equity committee um, to support those who have the greatest barriers to health care. So particularly, um, a lot of Trillium counties are rural, um, and rural counties have you know, historically had trouble accessing care and making sure people get timely and appropriate care when they need it. And so um, our health equity committee is really focused on reducing barriers to care for, um, for populations that struggle with that. Some other organizational changes. Um, we have added uh, some service lines to support members in accessing benefits. So we have uh, a pharmacy line. We have a line specifically for providers to make sure that they're getting kind of the hands-on attention that they need in this transition. Because um, it can be confusing with multiple plans and providers having to contract. Um, so we're trying to help them in that way. We have a, a nurse line for members to help address their health needs um, by speaking to a nurse, um, and then our behavioral health crisis line. So we will continue to operate our member and recipient service line, that's our 877 number, um, and that right now includes crisis calls, and then we'll have a separate behavioral health crisis line um, for members experiencing behavioral health substance use for IDD crises. We have added also some specialty teams within our care management department um, to support members who have um, some more complex needs. 
So each system, right, the hospital system, juvenile justice system, um, and departments of social services, uh, they have their own processes and requirements when working with, with individuals. Um, and so these individuals, these teams, the ED disposition team, the DJJ care management team, and the RAP, rapid access care coordination team, they work with these systems, juvenile justice, DSS, um, and the hospital systems to make sure that our members are getting access to care that they need um, and to make sure that um, those systems, you know, understand how health benefits are working for them um, and just to offer better coordination um, to use everybody's time and energy um, efficiently and especially with uh, hospitals to help make sure our members aren't having barriers to um, discharge. One other unique aspect of uh, tailored plan um, and Medicaid transformation is the Healthy Opportunities Pilot. I won't spend too much time on that. Um, it is another thing that will that tailored plan members will be able to access on October 1st when um, Trillium launches with the tailored plan. But it's really focused on uh, whether Medicaid funds are used effectively to address non-medical drivers of health. So things like um, access to food, housing, interpersonal safety, and toxic stress, and transportation. Um, so individuals who have uh, a significant behavioral health condition and a qualifying social risk factor will be eligible um, to receive some additional services to, to support them in their communities and meet those needs. And I will say Trillium, through our Neighborhood Connections Department, has been addressing social determinants of health for a number of years now. Um, we received 11 referrals for bladed members over the last year um, to address some of those needs. What we're doing now is um, helping connect members to community resources, as well as some internal funds we have to um, help stabilize them around those, those needs. So we're doing some of that work now. The pilot will provide more funding and support for that. Um, so this is uh, probably what you want to hear a little bit more about, um, a little bit of the meat and potatoes of what we've been doing in, Brun in Bladen County um, over the last year. So what's really important to us is a public behavioral health plan, um, as, and soon as a whole person health plan is to invest in our communities. Um, so we have been, I have been actively participating in the Bladen Substance Use Disorder um, task force and the HRSA leadership, um, grant leadership team over the last year. And both of those strategies are aligned with um, helping to prevent opioid misuse um, and to support um, people accessing recovery when they have substance use issues. In December, um, not that long ago, we presented the county with a grant for around $152,000 um, for the purchase of those lock boxes to stay, safely store prescription medication, um, and to cover the cost of medication-assisted treatment um, when folks go to the healing place for that long-term recovery. Um, and then in January, we provided the Substance Use Disorder Task Force with a little bit over $30,000 to support their efforts around building awareness that recovery programs are available in the county um, to help increase uh, those recovery programs, the peer-based recovery programs like AA and NA, um, and then to uh, continue to support the implementation of those goals of the task force. So really recently, um, we approved an additional request for Blade and EMS to receive 100 kits of naloxone um, to help prevent uh, opioid overdose deaths in the county. Um, and fairly soon, we've received an application which looks like it's going to get approved um, to direct some state funding to a local treatment provider to provide medication-assisted treatment to folks who are just as involved. Um, and that's really important because um, folks who are leaving jail and prison are 400% more likely to overdose than the general population, and so that's really a target population um, to help uh, prevent overdose deaths in the county. One of the other things that we were really excited to launch in spring of 2022 is our mobile integrated care unit. Um, those units really bring care to people where they are in the community when transportation is a barrier. 
Um, and so we're um, excited. The unit that's run by Coastal Horizons has been um, serving approximately 18 people per week. Um, and then RHA recently launched, launched a second unit, and that's getting up and running and seeing a few people. Um, and we hope that the use of that unit is going to grow over the next couple months. Trillium also has three tribes in our catchment area, and we want to make sure that we are meeting the needs of tribal members. Um, making sure they understand that care is available, how to access it, and also that it's culturally appropriate to tribal members. Um, and so one of our mobile units visits the Wakamatsu on travel grounds, and our C senior regional director and myself recently met with um, the Lumbee tribe um, to coordinate care for Lumbee tribal members that are throughout our southern region. Um, and also we did add the traumatic brain injury population to our consumer and family advisory committee. And so that, um, again, is an open position uh, or an open spot on that group that someone from Bladen County can represent. A um, couple more things. I'm not sure how, my, how I'm doing on time. If there's, okay. All right. I want to be, be mindful of y'all's time. Um, so one of the projects that we um, have recently undertaken is to distribute gun locks um, and, and gun safety guidance um, to our DSSs um, through our DSS uh, head of DSS engagement. Um, and so all DSS staff have to assess for safety in a home. And so having a gun lock on hand to hand a family when there's an unsecured firearm um, really goes to um, helping you know, safety for kids in their home, and also safety um, for the community. Um, as we've all seen in the news, um, there have been kids who accidentally um, fired a gun and also kids who obtained a gun and um, brought it to a school setting. And so it's really about community safety um, as well as child safety. Um, we're excited fairly soon. Um, there will be an accessible and inclusive playground in Bladen County. So Trillium has built 32 of these inclusive playgrounds over the last few years, um, and we are in the process of building one um, at the Bladen County Park in Clarkton. Um, and we expect, expect construction to start on that park in the next couple of months. Um, and it's really amazing to see um, the impact that these parks have. It's not just kids who utilize wheelchairs, it's um, you know, grandparents who are using wheelchairs, it's um, disabled veterans. So the whole family really benefits when the park is inclusive. Parents can play with their kids, kids can play with other kids and build those social connections that helps reduce that isolation, which is one of those social determinants of health needs. Um, and I mentioned our one community department, that department provides outreach and education on how to access behavioral health and IDD services through Trillium. So over the last year, they have attended nine community events and distributed 715 brochures and uh, a little over 1,400 um, flag items that have Trillium's access to care number. So it's really just about getting the information that Trillium is here in your county, what services we have to offer people out in the community. Um, and we've tried to do that through attending uh, and engaging with the community at local events. So even though we are serving a significantly smaller percentage of the Medicaid population um, once standard plans launched, we did get a reach out from Bladen County Schools about um, help with getting school-based therapy um, in the school. And our network department worked with the schools to locate a school-based therapy provider. And I'm happy to say that that provider is now in place and offering services. Um, to Bladen County Schools. Um, so we're excited that that's, uh, that's in place. When we work with a, a provider, they are always going to accept um, Trillium Medicaid. Uh, this provider, I understand, accepts a few other forms of insurance. Um, that is one of the complications with the launch of um, with Medicaid transformation and the launch of multiple standard plans in addition to the tailored plan. Um, so we're, we're happy to have made that progress. Um, just a few more um, data points uh, in terms of who we've been able to serve in Bladen County. 
So we've been able to serve a total of 883 members, um, and that's an unduplicated count. Individuals may receive more than one type of service, um, so we have their, uh, their primary concern um, listed here. So in terms of individuals with mental health, that was 547. Substance use at 243, and intellectual and developmental disabilities at 93. Um, and then, in terms of the value of services that we have provided, um, the total amount spent for services in Bladen County is $9,535,954 over the last year. Um, I heard someone go. It's a, so that's a, it's a large number and it's a significant number. Um, we've had four counties, as I mentioned, move to Trillium over the last four years. And during the transition, the first um, month or two of claims is typically what we see coming from uh, another LME into Trillium. Um, and so that would be what we expect is the average that was being billed through that other LME. Um, as you will see in this chart, you know, the numbers are really small. I, I know you have a copy, so hopefully they're a little bit bigger. Um, we have uh, that the number of services and the value of services increased significantly from February of 2022 until January. Um, January is now up to 844,135 per month. We still have um, some claims coming in, so that number may change when we report um, for next year. Um, but if you look at the difference between the February number for last year and January of 2023, um, it's a difference of $268,910. Um, if we add that up um, throughout the year, that potentially is an additional over $3 million of services coming in to Bladen County um, with fully injured LME MCO. And I think that really speaks volumes to the level of effort that we have put in to reach Bladen County residents, um, our service array, the providers that we work with, um, and our outreach uh, to make sure that Bladen County residents get the, get the timely and appropriate care that they need. Um, so we want to thank you for choosing us as your LME MCO um, at this first year mark, and um, we're going to continue to work hard um, to make sure people get the care they need. Um, so I'm happy to take any questions. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, you mentioned that in rural areas, citizens have um, trouble accessing care. Mm -hmm. What avenues are you being used now to notify citizens of available services that you have? What avenues are you using? So some of those things that we talked about, um, we have gotten our brochures out to various locations around the county. So town halls, um, the uh, cooperative extension. Um, so we're trying to get information out that way by having it placed at places like the library, DSS, and the health department. Um, our one community team, as I mentioned, they're kind of our outreach arm to let people know that services and supports are available. They've been at the library with a table handing out information and answering questions. And again, we've been um, participating in community events so that Trillium is in front of citizens, um, letting folks know that, that we're here and available to answer questions about access and care, along with the mobile units visiting some of those more rural, um, rural areas in the county um, to offer services closer to where people live. And you mentioned something, are you the publicity contact person for the own delay? We have a communications department. Um, so if there's an event that you all would like to have Trillium at, you absolutely can reach out to me. Um, for any sort of media relations, we have a communications department okay. as well. I mean, can you provide that number, phone number? Um, so I'm happy to, um, I've, I'm happy to give you a card at, at the end of the presentation, if that's okay. I have okay, one in my good. I have one in my card. Mm -hmm. yep. No. Um, and we also have a, an email, a general information email address that's info at trilliumnc.org. And so you can always email that info at trilliumnc.org email address. Um, and that will get directed to the appropriate department if it's, if it's not a direct communication. Thank you. 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 Thank you
I think you mentioned that we had around 800, and we mean Bladen County, 883 cases, something like that? 883 members that we served. Mm -hmm. How does that compare to population of other counties that are about the size of us? Are we getting the same number of cases coming in to you based on population? I'd have to go back and, and look. Um, it's, it's a little bit difficult when we have a, a new um, county join us um, to make that comparison. You know, it, when we're two years in, and we can see the number of people served this first year and then the following year it would be helpful. But in terms of the size of the county, it is comparable to um, other counties of your size. Now, will Medicaid expansion, that have any impact on your service? So Medicaid expansion really will allow folks who are uninsured to get more access to care. So mm -hmm. the state funds that I mentioned for people who are uninsured, um, they are, they're limited. Um, and so there are times when we can offer maybe a smaller array of services through those state funds in order to get people the basic care that they need. So when more people are receiving Medicaid, it will free up some of that state money um, to have more of those special initiatives to really serve people with significant needs. So we think that it will definitely have a positive impact on citizens in Bladen County and our population specifically. Thank you, ma'am. The, 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 I know the, when we look at the revenue base for Korea, for the 28 counties, do you guys provide your revenue and your fund balance that is accessible for us to see what kind of fund balance your entire organization has? Yeah, I, I apologize. I meant to share that with you all, and I might have skipped over it in trying to see through. Um, so I'm going back through my notes to try to make sure that I'm covering it for you. So our annual budget is $866,795,006. And our fund balance is $79,918,756. And so that's 9% of our current budget, which is um, within that range of the 18, 8 to 15 percent that's standard practice. Okay. Other thing, when we looked at Trillium, we had a concern with availability where when we were dealing with the other providers mm -hmm. that we had didn't have visibility of, of, of the MCO if we didn't have it. And at the time, when I look around town, I still don't see any difference in providers as far as visibility to say they're here. And that was one of the major concerns we had was people having access to see these providers. And I have spoken with some providers. I'm trying to see how this works, and I told them I would ask the person. They say that they don't want to come into Bladen County because the referral process is that they can't get into the referral process. They come in. They say, and you still send stuff outside the county and not referring it to here. So they won't put a facility here mm -hmm. because they say the referral process, they say that the system just doesn't work that way. And I'm trying to figure out how do we offset that where a provider will come in and we can keep the referral process inside the county so we can value the money. That person can hire people and see employment or whatever happens inside of this county. Mm -hmm. Still referring everything to why go to Lumberton because that's what they do now. The guys come in and say, I got an office in Lumberton, I got an office in White. And I said, Where well, you gonna put one here? Little time, he said, No, the referral process just won't work. And I'm trying to figure out how do we get around with all this new stuff coming out with Blue Cross and other five providers, the Taylor plan, mm -hmm. and that's gonna take some money away from providers. It's gonna keep up providers from coming in because of the Taylor plan, because the other big agencies are coming in. To handle that Taylor plan. You're trying to figure out how to get Joe Taylor plan put in place yeah. to compete with those big guys yeah. that's coming in. Absolutely. How, how are we going to offset that with providers to get some to come in to Bladen County so that our local citizens don't have to see going outside of the county to get service? Because right now, the majority of them, they're getting service from providers. They're in your market, mm -hmm. but they're not in this market here. They're not located logistically in Bladen County. How do we change that? What is 
freedom plan to change that or is it something that can be changed? So, um, so that's a great question. Um, and I appreciate you asking it because it is a little bit of part of the complexity with um, the LME MCO model. So the physical health network with the standard plans and tailored plans soon to come is an open network. So anyone who wants to join can join. The behavioral health network is still a closed network. And so we have to recruit for provider opportunities um, for specific service needs in the county. And so Trillium has had open requests for various services in Bladen County and throughout our catchment area throughout the year. Those requests are always listed on our website. Um, and so I'm happy to share with you all when those requests are open, um, but we actively recruit to build our network and that includes bringing in more providers to Bladen County and other counties in our catchment area. Um, so one of the open um, requests for proposal that's available right now is for child services. So any behavioral health or IDD provider that's serving children can absolutely um, apply to be in our network at the moment. And we do have some other open solicitations available. My question is, and that's trying to get this one, who does the referral? That's the issue I'm trying to figure out. When they are referred, they go to the health department, if they go to the hospital mm -hmm. or any agency, who does the referring? How does the referring go from point A to point B? The, the referring to, uh, to, a provider. to a provider. Who does that? So the way we we have a no wrong door policy. So if a Trillium member wants to receive services from a provider, they can walk right into that provider's office and get services right away. Um, they can also, if they have questions about who to see or the right level of care, they can call our call center and they will be transferred to a clinician who will do a brief assessment and help them navigate the right service provider for them. So there's a couple different avenues. They can walk right into the provider's office of their choice, and they can also get support to make that choice through our call center. Okay, but, but when we talked about treating company, I, I've heard good things about treating, is that when we talked about this process, change up, that there would be a link for people to come in and access what you just said. They would go straight into it with a sign that said, Trillium, we was living out here in Elizabethtown, somewhere strategically placed, mm -hmm. that they could access just what you just offered and walk into the door. And it would be someone that they could direct them to where they need to go. And it would be something to treat, not something just walking into a health department, social service, but actually walking into something that was free that would say you're in the right place to get these services provided to you. I have not seen that. So, so we do, what we try to do is focus our funds and our support on the services being provided rather than increased administrative costs that cut down on the <laughs> services that we're able to offer. So we do have an office in Bladenboro, but because we do not provide kind of that direct navigation to from from let's say a physical office to a doctor's office the avenue for people to get connected to care is really um so we, we wouldn't want an office to be a barrier to someone getting care it's um easier for a person to just walk right in the door so we have uh spent more of our uh support on helping people access service by getting our Trillium name out to the community. Um, we have some billboards up that are advertising the playgrounds and also have our 877 number for people to call, um, along with some of those efforts that I've talked about in terms of getting our brochures out um, and participating in those community activities so that we can be kind of face-to-face -face with people and explain what we do. Um, so. So folks can walk right into that provider's office and not have to make a phone call or visit an another office first. We want them to be able to just access the care right right when they're ready to do that. Here's the last word somebody asked. Yeah. <laughs> we, we like questions because we want to build understanding. So I appreciate here's, here's it. What, here's, here's what I'm trying to get. I talk to people that need behavior health services and different services. And when I speak with them, 
I say go to tree. Yeah. They have no idea who that is. Mm -hmm. They don't know. They don't know how to access it. They don't know where it's at. They don't know how to locate it. Where is the office located? That's the first thing come out of my you board. Provide how it for how it, Mr. Huh? You have it, see? So you provide it for them? What's that? Then how to get it with Trillium. That's what I'm saying. So I'm trying you to figure help out. Them though. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out, you know, if they come in and it's something that needs to be assessed. And I'm saying, I know I can do it if they ask me, but if someone doesn't have approached me and asked me, do they know where to go? Yeah. How do they know that Creum is the place to go? And the providers, if I say go see a Creum provider, mm -hmm. there's nothing indicating at the provider that this is Creum. So they're still at a loss. They don't know where they're going. So I'm trying to figure out how do we do that a little bit more open for the public. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Um, so our our website does have a provider search directory. So if folks go on Trillium's website, they can search for providers um, that will meet their service needs that way. Um, they can go right to a provider's office for an assessment if they're not sure which services um, to receive. I did bring our access and care brochures with me, so I'm happy to leave one for everybody so that if you or others and it's so sharing information is always really helpful. I know you all get asked questions all the time. So we want to make sure that you have the information you need. Um, and uh, in addition, one of the most basic ways for people to know that Trillium is their LME MCO is their Medicaid card has that information on it. So if they check their Medicaid card or check our website um, and also are you know receiving the information that's out in the community, they will know that Trillium is their provider. If folks call and Trillium isn't their um, isn't their plan, our call center staff will direct them to the right plan for them. Okay, thank you. You, you promised, Mr. Brees. I want to take you back off with what Mr. Togdale said. Um, first of all, right in front of my house, and I've seen several in the county. There's a big billboard with a lot of that information on it. Okay. Number two. If some of these MCOs don't want to be referred out, they need to move in so we won't have to refer them out. So they got to make an investment to be in Bladen County and Elizabeth Town or Bladen Borough or East Arcadia or wherever so we can refer them to in our county instead of referring them out. We don't have a choice but to refer out if they're not here. Uh, so I appreciate the efforts you've made. It's so much better than what we had before. It's unreal, <clears throat> very appreciative, and I'm sure you will continue to add, but uh, we, I appreciate it. And, oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, it's a new model, not to have a brick and mortar in an area, or, and currently in your other um, counties, mm -hmm. you have a brick and mortar facility, I mean, right there, or. Right, so we have, we have the office in Bladenboro here, um, but, because the services are offered really through that provider network, um, there is not a lot of infrastructure necessarily needed in a county in order for people to access services. It really is about the providers um, being nearby to where members are needing services um, to, to have people have the access that they need. So, so some of our counties do have an office and some of them don't. Um, and we haven't seen any less utilization of services in the counties that don't have a Trillium office as the ones that they do. Um, part of it is because we do have, um, you know, we have that kind of community level outreach that we've been doing that really helps folks connect and understand that Trillium is their LME MCO. Um, I'm glad you mentioned that you have the, um, the connection or the access now for the school. High school is one of the biggest ones. Middle school, I'm sure, but high school. Um, during the year, there are a lot of kids. The model or their protocol is if there's a crisis, they call the parent. The parents have to pick the child up, take them home. Where do they go? Right? Um, I guess our concern for some is that if there's a crisis in high school, why does it take one and a half hour for the crisis? Um, mobile or staff to meet their needs in high school because you don't have that time. Is there any way that? So, um, with the with the definition of mobile crisis services, um, the expectation is that mobile crisis will respond within a two-hour window. 
Um, so we like it when mobile crisis responds faster. And obviously, you know, um, to have the shorter response time is ideal, um, but they do have a two hour window to respond. So by having the, I guess, the coordinating of the Leon uh, in the schools, will it be faster? Do you think so? So what we're hoping, you know, for, um, and obviously we're focused on Trillium members, but other folks will get services through that school-based therapy provider. What we're hoping is some of those needs will be identified before it reaches the crisis level. And so um, kids will be stabilized through those services and not necessarily have to need um, something as significant as mobile crisis. Uh, um, part of that, though, those same students in the public schools, um, they are, a lot of them are Medicaid. And so their service, again, is probably going outside of the county if we don't have it inside. So is there any way that Trillion will do more, I guess, like you said, bring more um, providers inside? So again, we, we do have those recruitment opportunities where we have more individuals needing a service than we have service providers um, offering the coverage right now. Um, but in terms of coverage for Bladen County, we, we, do, we are well covered in terms of providers. Um, so right now we're really focused on those child services, particularly with kids who are being um, uh, kind of served by DSS as well or the juvenile justice system, um, because those are the kids who often have gone through trauma, need more intensive levels of care, and so we're seeking um, more providers to offer services at different levels of care so that they can um, they can receive the services they need and not have to kind of escalate into more of a residential. We want kids to be able to stay at home in their communities, um, you know, receiving lower levels of care earlier on um, to avoid out of home placement, out of county placement, which is, you know, what's been happening. In my last, um, I probably saw maybe two sides. I do have the brochure, but I asked at the last minute uh, meeting that. Is there any way you can get the magnets for folks to have to be at home? Um, because that's one place that most people are, yep. they can find immediate access to the information, phone calls, or telephone numbers, et cetera. Is that something I can do? Because I like for sure, but they fall and they're going to try. We have time. them. I am absolutely happy to get them. Yeah. Not very great. That's exactly right. Thank you. 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 Thank you for this presentation. It was very informative, very professional. And, and uh, we've been with three and four around a year, and we have we have made strides well above what East Point ever provided. We got mobile clinics in eight different places in Blaine County. We got billboards up. People are attending meetings and they're sharing the information. I just don't know. I just thank you, thank you, thank you. And I know it's a work in progress, and we, we're a year old, and, and we're going to grow, and we're going to get better, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Absolutely. There's, there's always people that we, there's always more people that we can reach, but we appreciate um, you acknowledging the work that we've done, and there is always more to do. And so we're happy, especially with things like your request for magnets, right? Um, so those are the things that are helpful for us to hear so that we can continue to get the word out and have have a physical presence, even if it's on someone's refrigerator. So, thank you. These people that we need to add these committees, is that a chairman, I mean, is that a, a board of commissioner thing we just send the names to you? Um, you can send the names to me. There's an application process, but we'll walk people through that process. I have one for you. Okay. That paid or volunteer? Um, it's a, there's a stipend that goes along Crown. with it. Um, yep. Not really. Thank you. I want to say thank you too because I'm kind of like Charles Ray. I know, you know, one year in, I think one thing that's profound is just the value of service. Uh, we're talking about things going outside the county. I know y'all are not chartered with being practice builders. That's one thing. Another, another thing I was going to say, a lot of times in our mind, y'all are, you, you know, you're also not chartered being paramedic. So what something happens at a school or somewhere, you got to be called or you don't know, how would you know? So the main thing, if we have these circumstances, they've got to be called. You've got to call the 877 number or else, you know, um, it's not like y'all are behind the door knowing something's happening. We're, you know, whatever. But um, 
So I wanted to mention that, but I, I think it's profound the amount of services that says, you know, the county has not grown in population yet. The services have grown profoundly, which I, you know, in other words, all of a sudden people are getting these services. And I've heard mothers that have autistic kids at my office that, I mean, they break down and they have literally just cried. They've gotten more help. And I'm not kidding. She would come up here and stand here and tell you that in one year, and I'm not going to name people, of course, but they are tickled. And they're like, man, I've never had that years and years. So they've got, you know, da 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 da. So I think it's very important. I think y'all are doing a great job. And just, you know, I know things evolving. Of course they are. A lot of stuff to get in here to do. Thank you so much for your time, Leah. There's a place for me to leave these. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. What's your card? Yes, I will get that for you. Any other individuals or delegations? All right. Matters of interest to commissioners first is Ms. Ty Shield Jones, our human resource director, with the presentation of 2023 Lumber River Workforce Development Board Award of Um, on Wednesday, March 1st, 2023, Layton County was awarded the Employee Award of Distinction by the Columbia River Workforce Development Board. So this is for our collectively working together in partnership to the NC Works um, program here in Layton County um, with job employment opportunities, job training opportunities. So it's a great honor to represent this great county. So our hard work and collaboration with other agencies and others. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. Any other matters? Thank you. 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 Brandon Jones and all them because they need that too. What did you, what was the, um, what's the, the one we talked about the last 14? What's the one you're referring to? The, the, the letter of support about putting the mental health providers on state payroll so that they do away with the copay and all that stuff. All right. Jerry McCoy, Jerry McVicker. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I'm here tonight to ask to uh, consider a scheduling a public hearing for the name of the new bridge across the Cape Fear River um, for the two dead sheriffs that have been killed, Jamie Collins in 2001 and Dwayne Hester in uh, 2012. Second. Motion by Mr. Bridge, second by Mr. Peterson. Chairman, Mr. Sheriff, I think it's a great idea. Uh, but I think we need to also add um, Mr. James Smith to that. Sure. Uh, he, cause he died in the line of duty when he was yeah. supervising your um, I don't have any problem with that. road yeah. inmate. So I, I, I supported that, but I think we should add him to it as well. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Any other discussion? <laughs> All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? <clears throat> also, Mr. Chairman, we've been contacted by performance uh, Dodge and Clinton, and they have a uh, few. Uh, Dodge Charter Patrol cars, uh, which is very hard to find now. So we're asking that we be allowed to buy six cars and uh, uplift them in next year's budget now. I mean, just deduct them from next year's budget on cars. Is this part of our replacing your Answer, yes, ma'am. We've gone by mileage, and what we'll do is just if we're allowed, if we're allowed to ten like we usually are, we just deduct six from it. Okay. Sure, this is the last year to charge. Yes, right. Get them now, or you don't. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Any other discussion? All right. Any favor, say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Then the uh, final item is the uh, considered appropriation for general fund. We had a couple of different things going on. I guess you saw in your packet. Uh, We've been working on the VCATs and the, uh, the radio system, and we've had some cost overruns, but we've also had some 
you can imagine we've had all kinds of different issues happen. But right now we are hoping to be able to finish build out the system for eighty two thousand five hundred and we're asking for an appropriation for general fund at the next meeting to cover that. Also in your material uh, we had some damage done at one of our sites we have a transmission line co-located um, a little over $9,500 of damage. We went ahead and had to make an emergency repair so that we keep our equipment operational. And uh, we're asking that that, that about be the full from the short fund put back in the chair's office to cover the call. Okay. Motion, I'm going to approve how it's taken about the past review. Any discussion? What was the total cost? It's uh, 82000 82, for the BCAS improvements and another 95 33 50 I think, for the uh, for the repairs. So is that the money that's supposed to come out of our yeah, we, yeah. we have we have used that money and we've had cost runs and we've had a a manufacturer that's uh, quick manufacturer and we're we're having to take the next least costly expense. Please, please. That's the same question. So this won't interfere with the project you got with Viper that we gave money. This will just be consistent with what. Yes, sir. We will need this amount to finish that project. Out. So we might have to go back again and know it needs to be a part of it. That's, that's, that's. that's still a considerable savings when we started comparing initially. You know, oh, yes, we had 82 back Yes, sir. It is. And, and I think what we're asking is for it to be uh, placed on the consent item next meeting for a budget amendment. If you're in agreement with meet your two meeting threshold. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll we already moved to it. You need that in the form of a motion? Yeah, we've got it on the floor. We do that, right? Yeah. yeah. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. 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 Uh, I came to you last meeting with an update on uh, inspections with Southern Fire Department and uh, Ammon Fire Department. Uh, we've since had more conversation with our inspector uh, for our area. We had a, a, a meeting across the hall with myself, uh, four of the commissioners, Mr. Hester, Mr. Peterson, Mr. McGill, and Mr. Britt. We're in the room, uh, Lee, I read Oh, Mr. Bull. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm trying to remember back. But um, anyway, Lee with the inspections office, myself, and uh, the fire marshal and the deputy fire marshal were in there. We asked a lot of questions, got a lot of insight. On two, uh, last Thursday night, myself and Kenneth were invited to a board of directors meeting at Tobamori Fire Department. It went well, um, lasted about two hours. Um, Mr. Willis, their board president, gave me the floor after he introduced and said his thing, answered a lot of questions, debunked a lot of myths about what's going on. Um, they did call a board of directors meeting. They did vote to merge with Tar Heel Fire Department okay. on their side of things. They also voted to use uh, Johnson Law Firm as their attorney on the nonprofit business entity side of things of merger. Uh, what's got to happen on our side of things? Uh, I think you have a letter, and I'm sorry for the late addition of that. I didn't find out that we had to officially do that till this morning. Um, but I think Greg or Ms. Maria added it to your uh, packet. That what this is doing is notifying OSFM that we have service districts in Bladen County, uh, fire service district. And once we did that back in 07, uh, Y'all control or the lines on that, if they move, separate, merge, or anything like that. So all this is doing is saying that um, y'all plan on merging. There's a lot of legwork that's got to be done. We got to have public hearings, and a lot of letters have got to be sent out to all the residents <laughs> notified of the public hearing. Some maps have got to be done uh, and made available for the public in Ms. Maria's office uh, before the meeting. But all this is doing is letting them know, which keeps them from sending a letter of those people going to attend. So uh, that is that would be y'all's duties as a board to to merge those two districts into one. So essentially, what we're doing on that map is cutting that line that separates them and merging them into one district with Sawyer Fire Department. 
But that being said, they haven't had any meetings with Tar Heel um, yet. They haven't agreed in any form or fashion. We've had some kind of um, informal conversations with them, and everything seems to be on the right track. <laughs> but we'll be scheduling a meeting with them here in the next week or so. But this letter you have before you tonight will be to meet our March 15th deadline to let the state know that we're merging these districts. But uh, we are good at Tobermory, no opposition, did answer a bunch of questions. Um, one main question I got with the citizens of Tobermory, once we merge and everything's done, to reap the benefits of Tar Heels 6 rating. The answer to that question is yes. It would take about three to four months to do that. They're a nine now, so that'll help those uh, citizens with homeowners in that district tremendously. I, I think they told us in the meeting, what, three or four hundred dollars a year, I believe it was, on their homeowners. So, uh, and Tar Heels will be re rated after a year after this merger is done with a possibility of lowering that rating even more. So, um, they see it as a benefit, and I, I think every and like I said, the board of directors was there, and fire chiefs, fire district commissioners, members, and members of the actual public that are not on the fire. About 40 or 50 people there. So. And they still use the, the Tugamore as a substation? So Tugamore will be, once the merger happens, will be a substation of Tar Heel Fire Department. Now, what they do down there as far as how they name it, it might be Tar Heel Fire Department, Tugamore substation. And how they do trucks, you know, that'll be at the discretion of Tar Heels, Board of Directors, and things like that. But their Tar Heel, once they actually mm -hmm. sign and do the merger, and our attorney can probably be in better than I can, uh, there'll have to be some new articles of incorporation done, and board members, and all that. So, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Just got one question. This former letter that you sent it to the citizen, would that be advised of the impact this would have on their homeowners insurance? So we can put that in there, yeah. but the main uh, thing is to notify them by general statute 154 is that you as a commissioner board is holding a public hearing to notify them. Usually I think on some things it's just advertising the paper, but we actually have to send out, and I think it's the citizens of both districts, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, probably not. But when you do that, then you can put that in that then? We can. Yeah. Or if they decide to come that night, you know, we can definitely address it at that point here. Yeah. Yeah. That would be great. Okay. We can do that. Mr. Peter, that's my suggestion. Uh, Mr. Dallas, in your conversation with Tubbo Moore and Tar Hill, please talk about uh, Tubbo Moore becoming part of that advisory board. Yeah, I did. So we did so meet. We don't get that present to this merger that they can be participants in what happened. Yeah. And so. Once we get to that point with fire district commissioners, which are the ones you appoint, um, I think it was mentioned in the, in the meeting we had, and uh, I did mention it to them out there that there would be equal representation of uh, those board members between each district. Uh, I have talked, I've talked, like I said, an informal conversation with uh, Tar Heels Board of Directors Chairman, and he's expressed that they want that on their Board of Directors side, which we have no bearing over. Want that to be equal representation too, and I'm sure that's something they'll address in their new articles of incorporation. So, thank you, sir. All right, sir. Thank you. So the next thing on the agenda is to, um, I think you have a contract before you with uh, Mosley Architects on it. Um, this is a contract to engage with them on the uh, EOC feasibility study. Where this is going to be done at is pretty much to up if or is it feasible to upfit the old jail to make this emergency operations center or tear it down and build on that same site? Um, strictly a study, no plans are being drawn or anything like that. They're just going to give us a good uh, decision on moving forward. Is it more economical to upfit that jail or tear it down and start up? So, I motion to approve Mr. Peterson, second by Mr. Gillespie. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you, sir. Thank y'all. All right. We received the advisory board appointment for the March 20th meeting. The next up will be our county manager, Mr. Greg Mark. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to review the calendar with you for March and April. 
coming out of that tomorrow from 10 until 3. There's a blood drive at the Lane County EMS base in the industrial park here in Elizabeth. Also, tomorrow evening, the Lane County Fire Association Chief Retreat will take place at the Emergency Services Training Center in White Lake. On Monday, the 13th at 5 p.m., the Health and Service and Advisory Committee meets at the Health Department. On Tuesday, the 14th at 5 p.m., the Board of Relations meets at Office of Cypher Street. The Board meets on Monday, the 20th at 6 30 p.m. and on Thursday the 23rd at 5 30 the North Carolina Association of County Commissioners Districts 4 and 5 joint meeting will be held. I think we saw something today that'll be in Lawrenceburg. Okay. Moving over to April on Saturday the 1st from 10 until 2 there's a Lane County Veterans and Community Stand Down event that will take place at the Baptist Church here in Lawrence Street. Also that day, there's a 5K run for Hope that takes place at White Lake. And Monday the 8th at 8 a.m. I'm sorry, Monday the 3rd at 8 a.m. There is a prayer service here. Also, the board meets at 6:30. County offices are closed on Friday the 7th. Observance of Friday and the Monday. And Monday the 10th at 5 p.m. Health Services Committee Board of Elections meets on the 11th. Martin, uh, yes, sir. April the 1st is Spring Fling and Blackbird, 10 to 9. Okay. There's a lot going on that day. Uh, moving over to April the 12th, you all recall we discussed uh, a month or so ago about doing an application for an NC lead fellow to work with the county and we were fortunate to be selected. They had a, a large uh, interest 82 local government applications and so we're excited about that. Um, we This person will have a financial focus in terms of helping in a variety of manners and it should be a great experience for that person and help us as well. So just to remind you the person will be an employee of the UNC School of Government. The total compensation package for that year is uh, Approximately 53,000, the county share is 13,000. So um, it sounds like a win win deal. It will begin in August, so we'll just plan here in Spirit with this plan to incorporate funding into the budget. Uh, 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 I got one. Uh, I have been working with Mr. McCann Manager Martin. I'm trying to put you guys on notice that we are back after the pandemic. Putting the expungement clinic should be functioning viable in maybe the month. And it's going to be also the gravel life of the expungement like all over the state. So please tell people that we're going to be putting that back in play where they can come in and get the bank lined up. I'm hoping this time <laughs> to make it do it that we can start that clinic back up again. And I'll have the applications and we'll get the process that everybody's not bringing that to you. So I'll just have to pass it out. Mr. Chair, I'm hoping that tonight we can we have uh, at the last meeting we talked about the ARPA fund for East Arcadia Jam. Um, they asked for a report from the historic, I mean, from the engineers saying that, that they were funded and we need that money to be uh, to them. Uh, not only did they provide the um, letter saying that uh, it could be restored to its success or its functional, it went to the historic society and they're the ones who requested it. And they too felt like that their funds would be used. That well, those funds as long as we had the one nine thousand funds from the county. And if additional funds were raised available, um, they're gonna use some funding from the county stockade to put the back to that restroom. Um, and I'm sorry, I went down and saw the building. Um, the other commissioners that were there agreed. Let me get out of here. It's about to fall down. That is what it is. Um, I'd love to think it could be rebuilt. I'd love to think that. Um, I've done what research I can on stature engineering. Um, just a couple of questions, I guess. One, did this individual actually come out on the premises? Yes, several times, a couple of times. 
Um, and Lord knows I every once in a while I tell the same thing in a sermon. So, but the, the letter they drafted is so in, unprofessional. Um, it concerns me. They don't know how to draft a letter. They might not be able to but that's neither here nor there. Um, but if you uh, just a, a, br a brief Google of this engineering firm, there's like five different towns they're supposed to be in. Their website shows no address. Uh, there are no pictures or documents of any project they've ever done. There's no picture of anybody. Um, and again, I'm not against this thing. It's just, I just want to make sure you all have the right folks advising you. Could Because even the letter says, we have a professional opinion, yet this might change if we need to modify it. And again, you try to read the letter and it's kind of one big long run on sentence, but their their website is obviously not a personal website. It's kind of a, it's like me taking First Baptist Dallas and putting the late church on it and saying that's our website. It's just very, very concerning. And I'm not trying to be a thorn in anybody's flesh. I just can, I've rebuilt houses and other buildings through the years. I've never been in a building that far gone that could be without tearing it down from scratch and building it back, which I would, if, it, if those funds could be used, I would applaud that. You guys would have a new building that could be used for generations to come. Um, I don't know. I just, man, it's, I hate to think we put that kind of money out and a year from now, two years from now, say, you know, we tried, it just didn't work and we're out that much money, as opposed to us taking that money and helping be seed money for a brand new project. Okay, so I guess my question is, there's, there's historical grant money there. And that's why you want to rebuild this building. You want to you want to maintain the building, right? It's historical for all kind of community, right. and you want that that those funds and keep that building viable and use right. something that I'll keep uh, that people can use it years to come. Yeah. Sure. Um, I guess my question is, would there be any other kind of grant money out there that would build a brand new, safe? Um, I, I'll give you a friend. We're building a brand new building at the lake, and it's only got it's like nine thousand square feet. And it's costing us two hundred fifty thousand dollars just to put a sprinkler system in. So the numbers that are put, being put out there to rebuild this building are are so, in my opinion, so under anything that's even reasonable. I, I wouldn't I wouldn't want you to give me three million dollars and try to rebuild that building. I just don't think you could do it. And that's just again that's my opinion. I do think it's it's got some merit. Um, again, if you just take your phone out, type in Stature Engineering, type in Everett Pan Pancook, um, there are, the only thing I found about the company at all were some reviews and they were 100% bad. I mean, terrible. Um, again, I, I may be wrong, and if I am, I'll apologize to him and to the company. But, but normally, if you type in you know, I mean, you can Google Greg Martin and they, a page is going to come up. You can tell everything about Greg Martin pictures and his history and where he did, but there's just nothing about this firm. So, that's the, uh, I was just going to ask, have they given any kind of estimate? They I did. Mean, what, what, what? They gave them. And they gave it to, I thought it sent to Greg, but I guess we didn't get that part. Just it came to four hundred sixty-six and I was one hundred thirty-six dollars in the cost of the digital. It should have that same email. That's for what? That was there or so, to, the, to do what? Read the Remember, it's not just inside the building, it's the shell. That's all it's inside the gym. It's a stalker site for us, and it's an engineer. I always uh, think that, okay. Sure. I think that we all, I don't go to no one else and tell them my profession is, is healthcare, um, <coughs> healthcare administration, and leadership. I won't go to an engineer and tell them how to do their job. And those who sit around and, and want to be are considered that they have the, the knowledge and the credentials to tell someone else how to do their job, I think it's a little odd. I got what you're saying. I thought it was a poor level too. And I agree with that. Now, I don't I'm know. Just, I don't want to see somebody take advantage of it. I'm going to tell you, if it can be built for 456, I'll write the check, I'll pay for it. Personally. I don't think that, but okay, we can hold it to it. I'll do it. There's no way that building can be revamped 
for $456,000. I'm telling you what architectural plans cost, engineering costs. Um, it's got to be sprinkled. You're looking. No, no sprinkles. Nothing that is going back to original state. state. Nothing else. It's projected. It's white to its original state. You've got to sprinkle it. You but cannot have this one. You cannot. Yeah, Historical. Okay. Well, most to adjourn was pleased. Oh, wait a minute. I'm still talking. I asked us to vote on this one on the funds. We said that on the money. It ain't on the agenda. It's not on the agenda. It should be. But I asked for to vote on it. It's not on the agenda. Most to adjourn. Make sure, make sure, you yeah. sit it on, make sure someone does it. Point in order. I thought there was somebody from the state that was going to bring us something. I didn't think it was a private firm. I never said that. No one said that. But look, no one said a problem. We didn't have a problem with it when there was harmony call. You guys got your money. No one asked for anything. I'm still talking, Mr. Chair. I mean, Mr. Peterson. You don't want to hear, you walk up and leave. I'm not going nowhere. Then let me finish. Then. I'm not going nowhere. Then let me finish. So, no one had a problem with Harmony Hall Hydro, how they did it. We had a big issue with uh, Paul Law Brown or that building. And East Rock, both, yeah, both, perfect, okay? Why? You, you got your funds? There was no question. Because you had the vote between five people. And that's what made a difference. Mr. Chairman, that's, that's just insulting and personal. And I'm holding Nothing. Harmony Hall to it. They're sending us reports. They're sending us how the money's been spent, what they're doing. We're getting, you know, I, and I went and toured the, the building out at Paul R. Brown. I hope they can get it done within that year. June's going to be here quickly. Boy, time's flying. And that, and it's supposed to be done by what, like the 23rd of June. They promised. They said it'd be done within one year. Said it'd be done in one year. And I don't know. We, we haven't, no, I mean, we haven't got any kind of report. I mean, I appreciate that we, we, we allotted $10,000, I think, to Bladen Baptist Lord. They sent in pictures of ramps and how much down to the penny, how much it costs. Um, Harmony Hall sent us reports. Here's how I the money's been spent. I haven't seen it. Yeah, that's sounds. I haven't seen it. Y'all got it. There's been emails. emails. I, yeah. 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 I, I just think, man, that is so responsible to anybody that's received large amounts of money, but it needs to be the same across the board. Um, I, but it's not required across the board. No. Yeah. Never, oh, never said you have to do it monthly. You know, it's it's really really yeah. Yeah. So so we're not going to vote on this tonight. Mr. Chairman, um, we can wait for two weeks. You're asking him to put it on the agenda. What's I, the purpose? The thing about, let me ask you this you question. What's the need to on the agenda? What needs to come to bring it to fruition? It's just thrown out there. Well, I talked to him about the agenda. That's the thing. It's just just brought up tonight, so we need, we need to have it on the agenda. People can think about it. But is that estimate just from the engineering firm? I mean, they're not going to be doing the work, so who's going to be doing the actual work? And the, so got the, it's probably, it was done through the um, David Richardson and the who is it called? Who's the group? It's called and the um, and historical society. Historic <coughs> they're the ones responsible for it, and the funds go to the historic society of North Carolina, and they're the ones who are responsible. It's not the town beast arcade you're doing. North Carolina. Sure. Sort of well, they, they don't need it. Come on now. We're not saying they have a bill. They got a good contract. Okay, I, I misunderstood. So, well, you can't. No one's saying it. The the you keep saying that, but you're not even an engineer. <laughs> I'm building. I'm not, you, pay, you keep saying that. My brother buys buildings. Um, other people buy buildings. They build them, but they're not engineers either. We're not getting anywhere, but yeah, we're, we're, we're just what's the criteria that's going to come back? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're going to have it, even if you're going to go to this point and be on our journey. What's going to be the criteria that's going to be set for the for presentation that's in the art PowerPoint? Nobody else gets it. That you've been looking at for months. So I'm saying, what do she that's need to bring? Wait a minute. No one else bought it. <laughs> no one about? else bought anything to the Cook County Commission, and you're asking to start case deal, and it's not fair. You're discriminating against them. No one else was asked to bring anything in. Not one person, not one document, not one thing. So why is it now we have to bring documents? Or they have to? That's all I'm asking. Mr. Chairman, I think everybody that came in and requested did. They had descriptions, and I know we're going to visit Harmony Hall from now to Kingdom Come, but they had descriptions of what would be used and what's been, and it was. No. I, I, just, I just wonder if, if we allotted the money, okay, and we did with the building, um, they're Paul Brown, and I do pray it comes together. 
But if we allot the money and time passes, is there any chance of us getting the money back if it's not used? And it, it, let's say you get to a point where it's, okay, we're halfway in and we're out of money. And now another builder steps in and says, because I'm telling you, any builder that take that job for $456,000 ain't going to take them long to bail out. Um, and somebody else comes in and says, okay, it's going to take another two or 300000 Then we're sitting here telling the citizens of East Arcadia, I'm sorry, but we can't because we don't have it. I'd rather deal with it right now going in than us dealing with it down the road. I don't think any of us around this table believe that you could rebuild that building for $456,000. I have no clue because I'm not a builder. But I figured the experts would. I built $5 million worth of buildings in the last three years. I'm saying you can't build nothing for $456,000. We're trying to build a house right now. And they had included, he also gets additional 10, 15 percent for overtime. So that's well, I, I don't appreciate it. I just, I'm not prejudiced. We're not prejudiced. I'll just reality is you cannot do that project for $456,000. I don't think you'd find a contract. I mean, I think that's fair. Have a contractor come in and say, here's a turnkey price, not to exceed. I'll, I'll make the motion. I'll make the motion. Okay. If there's a, if there is a contractor, a reputable contractor, not somebody that can't write a letter and doesn't have a website, but a reputable contractor that has a history a building and working with historical buildings, and they say we will do this project, not just seek four hundred fifty-six thousand dollars. I'll make the motion, and Charles Ray said, "No, I won't." <laughs> 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 well, I appreciate your support, brother. You did not ask any other document from anyone else, no other person to come in to do anything. No other building was in as bad a shape. May not be. Not even close. It may not be. Because yeah, I can go ahead and look at it. That's the reason. Okay. So it may be, but it's still no reason to do it. Because if you don't, the North the North Carolina society. But this way, I will. Hey. And you know the money. Hey, remember, that means if you give money to everybody else, you're out of the money. That means no matter what they do with that, you're out of the money anyway. I know. I know. Let me finish. If you're giving them the money, you're out of the money. No, we're not. If people are going to use that money as as, as stated, we're going to collect that money. We're right. gonna, I, I, we're I, gonna I, collect. That's not what I said, though. Yes, it is what That I is did. not what I said. Oh. That's not what I said, though. Let's go home. We're going to talk about it, argue about this next week. Let's we'll turn about... by Mr. Peterson, second by okay. Mr. McGill. See you in favor. Thank you. 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 Thank you.